Welcome to Flashback Generations. In this episode, we are going to play through the Batman miniature game by Nice Models. For this video, we're concentrating on the main core rules, so you should get a good idea of the core mechanics of the game. So, what's Arkham City all about? It's a skirmish tabletop game by Night Models, a model manufacturer specialising in popular film and comic miniatures. It's based in Gotham using the DC Universe heroes, using the Batman factions, namely Batman, Bane, Penguin, Two-Face, League of Shadows, Joker, Poison Ivy, Watchmen and probably loads loads more. There are different versions of Batman. Dark Knight film Batman and Arkham Asylum Batman are both options you can field for example, with a rumour that Adam West era Batman will make an appearance soon. Anyway, let's get on with how to play Batman Miniature Game. The game is based on two players, each controlling a band of about 8 character miniatures. The total number of turns is 6 to 8 depending on the game, effects and scenarios. The general objective is you're trying to win by controlling objectives which are predetermined with the scenario. The terrain itself plays a big role. The buildings and streets form the environment you're battling over and some elements such as lampposts and sewer covers have a direct effect on the game. Sewers can be used as shortcuts and lamps affect what can and can't be seen. The game takes place exclusively at night so line of sight is generally capped at 30 centimetres. Certain characters, however, might alter or change the setup of these. For example, Killer Croc gains an additional sewer, or Riddler adds a turn counter. These just add new tricks to your band's tactics. The models are all supplied with character cards too. These detail the vital stats you'll need in-game. In our demo game, I'm going to use Batman and some police goons, while Lindsay uses Bane. Seriously, he's a one-man army and Lindsay hates losing. So let's take a look at the character cards. These are critical to the game. We'll take a look at the Batman card. Firstly, you cannot duplicate a named character. Who they are affiliated with is the faction or gang they can ally with. So, for example, there's no taking Batman twice or allowing a policeman with Joker's gang. Some of the characters are free agents, but may have a rule that says they hate whoever and so can never join that particular band. The rank is important too, as you can only ever have one leader and one sidekick. Free agents are limited to 1 per 150 points of reputation. You can have any number of henchmen however. Next up, the weapons shown on the card detail how much damage the character can do and any special effects associated with those weapons. Yeah. Next down is the character traits. These are the special rules each character has. Honestly, there are so many and they have a wide range of impacts on the game, so check them out in your free time. Reputation is the value of each character. Typically you will want to play games where your band is worth around 300 reputation points. Bane is 150 points on his own. Funding is what money a character brings to the table. It can be spent on some minor additional upgrades for your squad, such as additional ammo. The character's core stats are next. Here's a quick rundown. Strength is a stat used by your character to wound another character. Willpower is the amount of action counters a player can use each turn. Batman has 8 for example, so can allocate 8 counters on the various stats each turn, but no more than each stat's value. So if you want to attack, you allocate counters to the attack part of the card. If you need to defend, put some on defence, and so on. Movement for characters is, by default, 10 centimetres per activation. Each token allocated here can add 1d6 extra movement when spent, or can be used to perform special actions such as run or climb. Attack is how many dice you roll when you can get out, or when shooting. Shooting can be done once a turn and costs two attack actions. When trying to block someone's hits, you'll also need to equal or beat their attack score to do it. Defense is a stat you need to beat to hit a character. On the other hand, counters allocated in defense can be used to try and block incoming hits. Endurance is your hit points. Think of these as the character's lives. Once damage taken equals or exceeds your endurance, your character is in trouble, but not necessarily dead. In addition, for every two damage a character receives, they lose a point of willpower. This means as they take damage, they'll be able to do less and less. Finally, counters allocated to this special stat can be used to manipulate objects, perform special actions and traits, and add some additional chances to recover stun damage. Right, let's get stuck in. So, for this example, we've already got the terrain set up, and for the purpose of the, this demo, we're just going to have a straight fight. No scenario. Although the scenarios really do add something to the flavour of the game. There are four segments to each turn. Take the lead, raise a plan, execute the plan, casual two recounts, and then repeat the process until there are no more turns. Okay, taking the lead. 
The game is six to eight turns long, and this is represented by these eight counters in the box. Four my color, four Lindsay's. Somebody, it doesn't matter who, picks one at random from the box. Whichever color comes out can choose who's gonna go first. <sighs> the color is then put to one side, so seven turns are left. In this game, Lindsay's color came out, and she decides she's gonna raise a plan first. So now I raise a plan by openly allocating all my action counters to my characters. This means the other player can see what's going on and this might affect what he decides to do with his counters. Each character gets counters equal to their willpower stat. I've finished so Simon will put his action counters down. Next, each player, starting with Lindsay as she raised a plan first, activates one model. This can be moving, attacking or performing special actions. This is the execute the plan stage. Lindsay's not going to do anything too mad at this point, so she's going to move Bane up to the policeman, intending to smash him up in a minute. Normally, a basic move is 10 centimeters, but because Bane is a large rule, he can actually go 12. I don't think he'll make it though, so I will spend one move counter and one special counter to double Bane's movement, so now he can go 24 centimeters. He's made it to the cop. After moving, a character can attack either in hand to hand or shooting. In our simple example, Bane just wants to attack the cop in hand to hand. I have to spend attack counters to do this. Bane gets one attack die for every attack counter spent here. Bane is attacking the policeman with six dice, as he had six counters allocated to his attack stat. Bane needs a three plus to hit him, because the cop's defense value is three. I allocated two counters into the defense on the policeman, so he has the option of spending these to get two chances to block. Bane hits. I decide I will try and block two of these hits by spending my two defence counters. He needs to roll sixes here to stop these attacks because that's Bane's attack value. His cop rolls a four and a one so unsurprisingly stops none of it. So all three of Bane's hits get through. Now I roll to cause damage. I need at least a three because that's Bane's strength value. For every hit that causes damage the policeman will take two stun damage markers. Different weapons in the game produce varying degrees and types of damage. It's worth mentioning here that when rolling to cause damage, you roll an additional die at the same time. This should be a different colour to mark it out as a collateral damage die. This took me an age to work out. So, for example, you roll to cause damage as usual, plus this extra white die. If the result on the collateral damage die is the same as any of the damage dice, you have also caused a knockdown on your opponent. So Lindsay rolls a 4, a 5 and a 2 on the damaging dice. That's two damaging hits. The cop takes four stun markers. The collateral die comes up a five, so the cop is knocked down as well. He's more vulnerable to attack while he's on the deck. Okay, so now Sam gets to activate a character. He activates a policeman who is nearby and has a gun. He'll be taking a pot shot at Bane. Shooting suffers penalties if the character moved in the same activation. So to make the most of the shot, I'll be keeping this cop quite still for now. I'll move straight to attacking, in this case, my shots. Looking at the character card, the cop is armed with an automatic rifle. It has a rate of fire, which is the number of shots you get per attack, in this case three. Guns in this game have limited ammo, also shown on the card, so you need to keep a record of how much ammo is used. Each attack uses one magazine clip. First thing to do is check the range. This gun has a range of 40 centimeters, so measuring shows I'm in range no problem. As the game takes place at night, Maximum visibility is 30 centimeters, although lampposts and other effects can change this. So it costs two attack counters to shoot, that's the standard cost for all shooting attacks. Simon removes his two attack counters from the character card. As before, he needs to beat Bane's defense value of three with his three dice to hit. Away we go. I got two hits. Bane can't stop this as it's a shooting attack. So two hits are straight through. One difference with shooting attacks is that they always generally damage on a roll of 2+. plus. As before, when Simon rolls for damage, he rolls a collateral damage die as well. He gets one damage result, so Bane is taking two wound markers. Being such a big guy with endurance 10 though, he hardly notices. It'll take a lot of fire to bring him down. So that's a basic run through of a couple activations. For now, I've ignored quite a few special rules like grab and push, you can imagine the sort of thing that they do. Ganging up an enemy so in hand to hand combat also gives you a bonus. Against shooting, there are cover saves available as well, known as blink rolls. Basically, if something or someone is partially in the way of your shot, there's a chance you'll hit that instead of your target. 
characters can also hunker down behind terrain features, providing a boost to their blink rolls. All the characters have activated now, it's time to check dead and unconscious guys. This is the casualty recount stage. If a character's damage is more than their endurance stat, then they're dead or knocked out. A KO'd character can try reviving themselves at this stage of the game, but while unconscious they don't generate any action counters to assign to abilities. This is a very cinematic play game. It's a hell of a lot of fun and after every game I feel like I've got a load of stories to tell. The rules are free online right now, as are several character cards. Hey, and if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.